What are the top five reasons an investor will invest in your project? Top five reasons an investor will invest in somebody uh, or their project, I think number one is because they want to help you. I think anytime you go to an investor, it's somebody who's probably in better circumstance than you are, or at least has the ability to help get you to the next level, make your dreams come true. I have had investors that get behind me simply because there's a trust level. There's a feeling of wanting to help me get to another level of my career. Um, sometimes it's because they feel a project's important. Often it's because they want to get a tax write-off. I mean, there's the business side of the business too. You know, I, I believe that, you know, astute investors are taught by business managers to avoid three or four different investments. One, one is nightclubs and restaurants, one is recording studios, and the other is movies. I mean, that's just like, those are the three you don't do. So getting private equity together for making motion pictures is, is difficult. We have kind of a stigma going in. There's already a, you know, a couple of strikes against us. So what's important is that we're able to appeal to an independent, an ind I'm sorry, what's important is that we're able to appeal to individual financiers or investors with what it is that we're trying to achieve with our work. I think that's really important. And I, as I talk about a lot in my book, I think it's really important for, for filmmakers to really do their research on people. Don't just go meet rich people. Meet people who can identify with what it is you're trying to do. You may have a passion project that you want to do, but you can do your research on a specific investor and learn that they may have a passion or an interest. Think about doing something that is something that they will be more open or interested in doing and go down that road so when you meet with them, they're excited and thrilled about what it is you're trying to pitch. Take care of business, do that. And then they're gonna come usually if it's successful in a good, a good journey and say, what is it you wanna do? And that's often been the hardest thing because you know, again, as filmmakers, we're myopic. We think about what we wanna do. And often you have to think about what other people wanna do that are in a position of helping us. So I always say, go in with an open heart, go in with an open mind, be willing to bob and weave a little bit off of your plan. At the end of the day, the goal is to work. The goal is to make new relationships. I mean, I have investors that we've known for 35 years that have faithfully gotten involved. I have investors that have invested one time that I've known 25 years and we're still best of friends. And they did it one time and didn't ruin the friendship. It's just they wanted to try. And I have I have uh, you know friends that I've, I've known for 25 and 30 years who would never invest in this business and they are more than capable. It's just to each his own. But I think um, people will want to, I, I say you know you always have to remember you're under the watchful eye. If you are going to approach people to invest in you, realize you're gonna become an open book. They're gonna look at your social media. They're gonna look at how you conduct yourself. They're gonna invite you to parties where there's gonna be alcohol because they want you to drink and they wanna see how you're gonna behave. People don't realize that. I mean, I know a lot of real close calls friends of mine have had over the years where like, God, you know, I had an investor on the hook, had this party, I drank too much, passed out at the guy's place. Well, duh, you know, they're, they're almost saying, here, let me see how you do. What can I trust you with? And just remember, you have to treat their money like it's your money. And I think you know some of the success that we've had with our investors, it's not always about how much the return on investment was, it's about a trust level. It's about the experience. Let them feel involved. You know, I send my investors emails at the end of every night telling them good, bad, or indifferent how the day went. And then once we're in post-production, I, I fill them in once a week. And it's that way in pre-production too. I just feel that they, we're doing what we do because they trust in us and they gave us the means to do it. You have to let them feel involved. And a lot of times these investors, believe it or not, are a little bored doing what they do. And they see this as kind of a neat little fun outlet. So involve them, you know, let them feel a part of what you're doing. That being said, have you ever put money from a credit card into any of your projects? Have I ever put money from a credit card into one of my projects? Um, oh, yeah. Um, there's been times where I've done uh, self-funded projects. You know, I talk about the $500 pilot. I talk about the $10,000 movie. I mean, I had an investor that came to me with $20,000 and said, I want to make a movie with you and um, didn't account for 
SAG Bonds and the fact that it was kind of a sequel remake to something we did that was on SAG Experimental and had to repay all the actors for the work they did the year before. So that 20,000 turned into 12,000 really quick. And the investor was cool enough to say, I'll throw an additional amount in for the bond, but that's it because he would get his bond back. So we really had about 12 grand to work with. And there was a couple of days that it was kind of like, all right, you know, let's feed the crew well tonight and just, you know, it's part of it. Um, but I've never had to like max out a credit card to make a movie or anything. I, I, I haven't had to do that. I max out credit cards doing other stupid shit. <laughs> I know, no swearing. I had to throw that. No more jet skis, though. So we're no good. more jet skis. Yeah, no, so that, that's yeah. over. That's over. <laughs> it's a good question. Though. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's a valid yeah, we question. We did Dark Side. I, I put about $3,500 on credit cards to feed. I just, the people weren't eating well enough, and the, the budget was so cheap, and they were all working for nothing. And it was like, God damn, I gotta, I gotta feed these guys. So I just, I told my wife, I'm like, I, I can't do the Subway and pizza thing for 15 days. We're, we're gonna feed them every three days really well. But we did, we did, and I think we got, I think we got a good result from that. You know, and you feed them well, happy crew, happy moving, right? Just wanna be fed and respected, you know. If you invest 250,000 in a movie, does that mean it's going to sell for at least 250,000? Oh, hell no. It's like putting 75 million into a movie and sometimes it makes back 10 million. I mean, there's no guarantees. Um, obviously, the more money you have to play with, um, hopefully the better the cast, the more bankable the cast, the more well-known the cast, but you don't always have that. I mean, we've done a lot of $250,000 movies. And I think, again, it comes down to telling a good story. It comes down to getting a good cast. It's recognizable and marketable. Um, and it's also about those locations you know, take people places they want to go, make them never feel like they're watching a $250,000 movie. You know, I take a lot of pride in, in my $20,000 movie we really did for 12 grand. A lot of people don't know the story of that and what it did for my career. I actually got more out of my career because of that than I did from Gridiron Gang. Um, and I did it after Gridiron Gang. What's interesting is, is I had done a film, I wanted to tell a story, and I, um, for me, it was about showing people what I could do on a dime. That's, as you know, if you've read my book, it's about making films for a dime that turn and make a dollar. That's what it's about. So for me, I went out and we made this, let's just say $12,000 movie after I put in a few grand on my credit card to feed. Um, I had a friend who was very tight with Sumner Redstone, who at the time, who you know, he just passed, but Sumner was the head of Viacom. And a friend of mine got it to Sumner and said, a friend of mine made this. I don't know if you want to watch it or not. I want you to watch it and check it out. He's like, well, why am I watching it? Well, there's pretty girls in it, you'll like it, but I want you to watch it for the production value. And when you're done watching, I want you to guess what he made it for. So Sumner sat through this 90 minute debauchery of mine. It wasn't a great story, it just was a pretty movie. And he was pleased and impressed with it and glad he watched it. And he said, oh, I guess he probably put a couple million into it. And my friend said, well, he actually put about 12 grand into it. Sumner picked up the phone called Brad Gray, God rest him, he's dead too. Picked up the phone and called Brad Gray and said, I just saw a movie that apparently was made for $12,500. I could have sworn it was made for a couple million. I need to get it to you. Film got sent to Brad. I got a call from Brad Gray the next day. He said, yeah, I need you to start meeting with our people. We wanna get you in here. I met with Les Moonves. I met with Michael De, uh, De Bulbray, who was running Paramount at the time. And it opened up Amy Powell, who was running in Surge, which is, you know, did Paranormal Activity and a lot of other great films. And that film opened up a lot of doors for me because it showed people what I could do for a dime. And it, and it allowed my investors to come back out of the woodwork who I hadn't worked with in many years. Because, you know, you go make a film with Sony, you're not hitting people up for a quarter million dollars to make movies. You're making a, you know, you're making a studio movie. So it reopened those great opportunities and kind of just reminded me, okay, you don't need big budgets to make something look nice. Now we just got to focus on making better movies. Mm -hmm. And it's been a fun journey. But yeah, we, um, or David Bulbery was the guy at Paramount. But um, it, it, it opened those doors for me that, you know, having a number one blockbuster never got me. So I really encourage people to make those low budget, glossy, good looking films. If your story sucks, they better look good. And I went in on the merit of guess what I did it for. And um, people thought, you know, 600,000. Most people who were in the know figured 600 to a million. It was a $20,000, $15,000 movie. Yeah. That actually ended up being 12. 
Because well. didn't you you lost some of the money? Well, it was a twenty credits. Twenty or twenty five thousand dollar was the original agreement, but because of our previous jot with SAG and those actors, we had to repay them for their first. So we lost about eight grand to SAG. So that came down to about twelve, and then you know we ended up you know probably putting in about twenty eight hundred of my own for food and stuff. So yeah, you know, about fifteen thousand. Wow. How long was the shoot? How many days? Twelve days. Twelve days shoot. Pick, did a, I did a day of uh, I did a day of second unit with two of the actors because they were friends of mine. They did it off the grid. You know, I wanted them in the car driving, you know, drive bys and stuff. And then I went out and just grabbed a camera and just second unit did the hell out of it. You know, got those great magic hour shots and just filled up the just filled it up with some pretty, you know. But it was well shot. It was well acted. Um, you know, we had Sean Young, Betsy Russell from Saw. Ron Masak, who's been in everything. Um, Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn. I mean, every face in it was recognizable. Jason Pace, Ryan. Um, oh, I'm blanking on Ryan's name. It's my fault. There was just some really good talent in that film. And uh, I was proud of it because it looked pretty. It was a beautiful movie. It was a horrible movie, but it was a beautiful movie. Why was it horrible? It was just stupid. It was, you know, I did, I, I did the first one, which was a pure story about a story I wanted to tell, and that was the pilot that I did for 500 bucks. And somebody saw it and said, oh my God, you gotta make a sequel to this. And that was, that was the mistake, story-wise. There was no sequel. But somebody was throwing 20 bucks, you know, 20 grand down to make a movie. Mm. I'm not doing anything this week, let's do it, you know? And so we did it. Do you think that if you'd had more time, you had said it was a 12 day shoot, if you'd had more time, would it have been better? Or no, the story was, was fundamentally. It was a horrible script. No, it looked good. I mean, you know, again, it's a 15, 12 to $15,000 movie that some people thought we spent 600,000 to 2 million to make. So it visually was fine. It was, it was just, the script was written in like a week. I mean, it was just in no development notes. It was like, oh, here was the prequel. Just, just let's just carry on and write and tell a story. And it was, it was just, you know. It's more of an experiment. I see. Yeah, it was fun. 